Hi oh guys, um, it's been a couple of weeks since I did any videoing and I'm slowly getting back into this again. Uh, what have I been doing? Well, I've made sauerkraut, I've done two types of sauerkraut, I've done plain and I've done some with caraway seed in it. And I've done fermented garlic as well, or fermented ramsons, wild garlic. Um, same as doing the sauerkraut, you need salt, good bucket and a good mix up. And this morning I've done my carrots. With ginger gotta wait for a few days for that <clears throat> in a couple of days I will be trying out my first lot of bacon um, I followed the river cottage method which is by far the simplest method you don't have to use any pink salt or anything like that it's just straight either kosher salt Celtic salt uh, Himalayan salt or PDV salt um, no, basically it's a salt with no anti-caking agents or, iod or iodized salts at all. Uh, just pure salt. Um, and basically it draws all the moisture, moisture out. Um, and that seems to look well. <coughs> I say we've managed to escape the lockdown a little bit. We've been out for a couple of walks. The dogs have a lot of myself. Uh, we went up to Toys Hill yesterday and had a thoroughly good walk up there, a good three or four miles. It's a good circular walk with a couple of very steep climbs. Um, takes you past Emmett's Garden, which is locked down now at the moment. It's National Trust property, so is Toys Hill. And also it's sandwiched right between Chartwell and Emmett's Garden. Some nice views over Sussex, Kent and bits of Surrey. Um, you can see Dashdown Forest from there. Excuse me. It's got a little, little bit of a garlic aftertaste. Um, I've resurrected my smoker. I never actually used it. I made it some years ago with the intention of using it, but I wasn't sure how to... See, this would... Using it one way would have been a hot smoker, but I found some uh, a cold smoking setup, which I can actually put in the bottom. Hopefully, it will fit in the bottom of the... Um, of the bread tin. Uh, next video I will show it. In fact, if you look through my previous um, previous videos on YouTube, you will find somewhere the smoker. A very simple setup. It's just big square enamel bread tin, four holes drilled in it, pins through it, and a little grate on the top. I'm gonna have a little bit of an experiment. I'm gonna get myself some A10, A10 bean tins and try and build a small smoker for that um it seems a good idea and when i was out walking the dogs this morning i thought about doing another type of smoker when i do when i was doing buck skinning when i went on a buck skinning course we smoked our buck skins under a um basically a bed sheet smoker it was a little it was a very a very basic frame Chucked a bed sheet over the top of it and or some canvas over the top of it and we smoked our buckskins through there. Uh, very, very, um, very, very effective. Um, might have a go at doing some fish like that. Maybe smoke some trout. Um, experiment with uh, hot smoking and cold smoking. Both do, do, both do different things to your product. One basically cooks a product, as far as I can see, and the other one just imparts a smoked flavour to the product. Uh, Going to have a go at making kefir. And, Jesus, um, got, a, got the river cottage. I'm going to go through more river cottage books, basically, and working from there, doing projects from there. This all ties in with bushcraft, as far as I can see. Um, I see a lot of people doing bushcraft, uh, basically all they're doing is going out camping or they're building homesteads in woods. I don't, when it comes to bushcraft, I'm more of a, a leave no trace type character. I don't like building sort of semi-permanent camps. Um, I like a, a little fire, a uh, very simple fire, which can be, once it's out and dells, you can basically cover it over and... The only person that would know always there would be a pucker tracker, you know, someone that would know 
knows what to look for. It's the whole idea of setting up semi-permanent bases just, just annoys me somewhat. Okay, you may have permission to use that woodland, but you're going away from the uh, going away from what I think is the ethos of bushcraft. Um, if you want to build a semi-permanent shelter, yes, do. But it's um, it's just something that doesn't doesn't work well with me. Uh, watched a video the other day. It's been kicking around in my mind, and I actually found it. It's the uh, Cree Hunters of the Mister Nissi. Um, very good little video, about an hour long, and uh, done by the National Film Board of Canada, I think in 1974, 72, 74, and it follows a group of Cree Indians as they go out and spending about six, seven months out in the backwoods, hunting, canoeing, and what have you. Very, very interesting little video. Really enjoyed it, and I'm going to catch up with those. The lockdown has actually managed to... I haven't suffered so much through the lockdown because I've been working right through it. Um, it's strange. I'm, a, I'm an artisan baker. I'm a baker. Uh, I now apply my skills at a supermarket, but in the past I have... Been a ver I had my own business and it was an artisan business, but like all things, all things come to an end and that did. But it's been good dishing out advice on baking. Now, if anybody out there does have a problem with their baking, do get in contact. You know, I'm quite willing to pass on my skills. Now, Sandy, you mentioned about doing a, a bread video. I would love to do it. I really would love to do the whole process from start to finish. Unfortunately, my oven, my domestic cooker, isn't up to the job. It's, it's, it's just a basic oven and it would not bake a good loaf. It would bake a loaf, but it wouldn't bake it up to what I would, ex what I would expect. Um, it did cross my mind to take, to take my recording gear into work start a bit earlier and record the process as I do it at work. It isn't much different to what you would do at home except for it's on a bigger basis and we use emulsifiers in the dough to make it a no-time process rather than um, a bulk fermentation process. Uh, if anybody wants a recipe, by all means do get in contact. Um, I can go through a Bannock recipe for you. Uh, right here, right now, right off the top of my head. Uh, and it's three parts flour, two parts skim milk powder, a good pinch of salt. And even though I'm using self-raising flour, I add a little bit more baking powder and a considerably bigger pinch of baking powder if I'm using wholemeal flour. You bring it all together with some water or milk. Just bring it together. Don't develop the dough. And then you can bake it in the oven, over an open fire or whatever. Um, I, normally, I normally have raisins to mine, whether I'm having it savoury or sweet. I like the raisins in it, adds a certain sweetness to it. It's quite nice. I have it in mind at some point in the future to start doing some cooking videos out in the woods. Um, got to wait for all this crap, all this COVID-19 COVID to pass over and hopefully consign it to history. I very much doubt that we will. I think it's going to be with us for many, many years yet. Um, a bit like the flu. Uh, many other things I'm going to be doing. I'll be back to making some biltong. Um, I've got a recipe for that. I've just got to source myself some venison. Uh, I could go, go and get the venison. We've got plenty of deer around here, but butchering it is another thing. I haven't the f I've got the facilities to butcher it, but I haven't got the, the storage room to put all the meat. And of course, I can recycle the skins, make a bit of buck skin, and make myself an outfit. Anyway, guys, that's enough of my warbling. Now, as I say, that's it. I've spent oh nearly ten minutes chatting to you lot. Um, do look at my previous videos. In many ways, they are still relevant. Um, I'm just going to be exploring other aspects of uh, of bushcraft in the in the future. I want to get back into it. Uh, this weekend, I reached a grand old age of uh, actually 
parts of me reach 63. I think my knees are 63. My head is about 21. And bits of my body are various ages. Well, anyway, I technically I'm 63 and I'm feeling good, even though a little exhausted these days. So, guys, TTFN, and I'll catch you down the line.